What's up, Wake? My name is MJ, and I'm a part of the Wake team. Can we take a moment to talk about Vista? What an incredible night. We are so excited to participate in house parties again tonight as we dive into our new series called Refine. Check out the amazing worship and message brought to you by Sean Curry. Never forget me, even when I try to hide. When you don't stop speaking, when I hear the lies, when I'm lost and alone, when I feel there's no hope, I know you're by my side. So I will let go, I can stand here and know you're leading me through the Every moment I need your love When I can't hold on I need your love It's all around me I need your love When I think I'm all alone When I hear you call me close I need your love And all I know is I need You brought heaven to me No sin cannot hold my life Cause all I've been missing You've now satisfied When I'm lost and alone When I feel there's no hope I know you're by my side So I will let go I can stand here and know Hold on, I need your love It's all around me, I need your love When I think I'm all alone When I hear you call me close I need your love And all I know is I need your love I need your love There's no, I know you're by my side, so I will let go. I can stand here and know you're leading me through the night. When I'm lost and alone, when I feel there's no hope, I know you're by my side, so I will let go. I can stand here and know you're leading me through the night, cause I need Every moment I need your love When I can't hold on I need your love It's all around me I need your love When I think I'm all alone When I hear you call me close I need your love And all I know is I need your love I need your love What's up, Wake? My name is Sean Curry, and I'm so excited to be with y'all tonight. Man, can we just take a second and celebrate how incredible Vistas was last week? It was so amazing worshiping in person with you guys just a week ago, and I'm so excited to worship in person again with y'all soon. But tonight, y'all are in houses all around this area, and that is awesome. Hey, let me start out tonight by asking you a question. Have you ever been put into a situation that you didn't see coming? Have you ever been put into a situation that you didn't see coming? 
See, as I was thinking about this for me, I, I, I just imagine, man, the definition of this question, the solution, the answer to this question is just breakups. Like, y'all ever been through a breakup? If you haven't, like, good for you. Hopefully you never have to experience it, but you probably will at some point. Uh, just spoiler alert. But for me, man, I've experienced this a couple of times. And man, I, I gotta be real, sometimes you just don't see them coming. To see my senior year of high school, I was dating this girl for a few months, thought it was going super well. And I went on this mission trip to Guatemala City, Guatemala, and I was so excited about going to Guatemala and all that God was doing in my life. And I was, while I was in Guatemala, I remember, I, was, I remember praying for this girl. I'm like, man, this girl is awesome. Like, we are great together. I got her some gifts, some souvenirs, came back, and I hadn't seen her in a week. So I was like, man, I miss my girl. And so I go over to her house. I'm excited to give her these gifts and tell her these stories about my trip and I go and I sit on the couch and she's sitting next to me and I'm like, hey, so-and-so telling you about my trip. This is what happened. These are all the ways that God moved. It was amazing. Wish you could have been there. Hey, I actually got you these gifts. Just give her these gifts, 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 gifts. Give her the gifts. And she's, she, and I'm, you know, she's sitting there and I'm expecting a, hey, Sean, man, I miss you so much. I'm so glad you're back. Or, or maybe like, Sean, man, you did not have to get me these gifts. This is amazing. Thank you for these. This is great. But instead, I sat there on the couch and I, I, she looked at me after I was so excited, told all my stories, give her these gifts. And she said, hey, so um, while you were in Guatemala, I emotionally detached myself from you and I've decided we need to break up. Ouch. Three days before my senior prom. <laughs> Did not see that one coming, right? Like, I thought it was going to be this awesome, like, love moment where I give her these gifts, just tell her these stories, we connect. Nope. She emotionally detached herself, break up, could not have seen it coming. Like, I thought it was about to be smooth sailing, but instead, I was thrown into a fire. I was in a situation that I did not see coming. Have you ever been there in a situation you couldn't have seen coming? Like maybe it's when you feel lost for words to describe the emotions that you're feeling. Maybe it's that moment where you don't know how to get, a, get out of the, all the anxiety that you're feeling. Maybe, may, maybe when it's, you don't know how to fight for your faith with all these circumstances falling in ways you didn't see them falling around you. And it feels like all of a sudden, you're in a fire that you have, feel like there's no way out of. See, today we start a three-week journey called Refine. And I wrote down the definition of Refine. The definition of Refine is simply this. To improve or perfect by pruning or polishing. To improve or perfect by pruning or polishing. And so over the next three weeks, we will see, we'll begin seeing how, how to use the fires that we walk through to be refined by who God is calling us to be. In the Bible, in the book of Daniel, there's a story of some dudes named Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I know, weird names. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And man, let me tell you, they find themselves in a place that they feel like there's no way they could have seen coming in a fire, ready to be refined. Let me give you a little bit of backstory before we dive into the scripture. So like I said, there's these three guys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And they're living under this rule of this king named King Nebuchadnezzar. I know, a lot of fun names in this story. This dude, King Nebuchadnezzar, is power hungry and controlling, power hungry and controlling. He does all these things to try to make all the people in his kingdom worship him and only him. Like there's this one moment where he has this dream, right? And he wakes up. Like you ever have a weird dream that you don't know, really know what it meant? I have them all the time. This dude though, wakes up, has this dream, and he's like, if so, nobody in this kingdom can tell me what this dream means, I'm going to literally go out and I'm going to kill all the wise men in this kingdom. Like, what? What just happened? It's like this dude's wilding, right? He's, he's about to kill all the people in the kingdom just because he can't have a dream be interpreted. But luckily there's this guy named Daniel in this story too. And God gives Daniel this vision of what King Nebuchadnezzar's dream means. And he goes up and he tells him what the dream means. 
So all is good, right? All is great. Like King Nebuchadnezzar is happy for a second. He promotes Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to places of power in his kingdom. And for a moment, things seem great. But just like my girlfriend, King Nebuchadnezzar changed his mind, right? And he all of a sudden, in this moment, he decides, Nope, I'm gonna create this golden statue, okay? Out of nowhere, this golden statue. And whenever somebody in my kingdom hears music, they literally have to bow down and worship this rando golden statue. And if they don't, I'm gonna throw them into a fiery furnace and have them be burned alive. Like, dude needs counseling. Can we agree? He needs counseling. And all of a sudden, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are faced with this decision, right? Do I worship this weird golden statue or do I worship the one true God that I know to be God? And King Nebuchadnezzar comes up to him and he says, hey, I need you to worship this golden statue. And they refuse. He does not take it well. Let's see what happens next. Daniel 3, 19 through 28 says this. Then Nebuchadnezzar was filled with fury and the expression of his face was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He ordered the furnace heated seven times more than it was usually heated. And he ordered some of the mighty men of his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their cloaks, their tunics, their hats, their other garments, and they were thrown into the burning fiery furnace. But the king's order was urgent and the furnace overheated. The flame of the fire killed the men who who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell bound into the burning, fiery furnace. Pause for a second. Can we just talk about how insane this dude is? Like, he throws Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into this fire, completely bound up, turns the heat up seven times to the point where the people who just throw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into the fire literally burn to death. Not even in the furnace, so Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego should die on impact, right? On impact. Not that slow burn kind of thing, like instantly to ashes. But something else happens. Check this out. Story continues. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished and rose up in haste. He declared to his counselors, did we not cast three men bound into the fire? They answered and said to him, true, O king. And he answered and said, but I see four men unbound walking in the midst of the fire and they're not hurt. And the fourth one looks to be the son of the gods. Pause. Let me be clear. Three men went into the fire, but when King Nebuchadnezzar looks in, there's four. I might not be good at math, but four is more than three, okay? And they're like, what is happening? Is this some kind of magic trick? Like how are there four people in the fire? Well, a lot of scholars believe that the fourth person in this fire is actually Jesus. Jesus is, comes down from heaven, fully God, into the fire with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He comes down into the fire to help prevent what the fire could be doing. And check out the king's reaction. It says, then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the door of the burning fiery furnace. He declared, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out and come here. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire. And the satraps, the prefects, the governors, and the king's counselors gathered together, and they saw that the fire had not had any power over the bodies of those men. The hair of their heads was not singed. Their cloaks were not harmed. And no smell of fire had come upon them. Nebuchadnezzar answered and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants, who trusted in him and set aside the king's command and yielded up their bodies rather than serve and worship any god except their own god. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were thrown into a furnace, and not only did they not die, they came out of the furnace unbound, untouched, and unshaken. Guys, bros didn't even smell like smoke. Like if you've ever had a bonfire in your backyard and you've been in anywhere in the yard, you smell like smoke for the next like three days, right? They were inside of a furnace, come out not even smelling like smoke. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were in a situation that they could not have seen coming, but how they reacted changed everything. Three things I feel like God is saying to us here tonight. First is this, 
Jesus is the only one worthy of worship, no matter what. See, just like the king wanted for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to worship him in some random golden idol, they decided to stick with Jesus, even though it, they knew there was no way out of the fiery furnace. And what this is saying for us, I think, is to not give in on what you know, even if you feel like you have no other option. Jesus has your back. Now, and I want for you to hear me when I say this. As a Christian, it's not our job to get through the hard things that the world throws at us. Like it's not your job to get through your parents' divorce. It's not your job to get through a national pandemic called COVID. It's not your job to get through a breakup. It's not your job to get through discrimination. But as a Christian, it is your job to have faith that if you worship Jesus, trust in his plan, he will protect you and heal you from whatever fire you feel like you've been thrown into. Second thing is this, when you feel bound, Jesus wants to set you free. Jesus sets Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego free in the fire. Like if you feel like you're in a fire right now, guess what? Jesus wants to set you free in it. It doesn't mean that you're, he's gonna instantly take you out of the fire. But what it does mean is that there's gonna be a way that within your fire, Jesus wants to give you freedom as you figure out your way out of it. So what does that look like? It looks like giving him your worries, your fears, your anxiety, and he will set you free free. Hear me on this tonight. No fire can touch you if the Lord is surrounding you. And I'm not saying that you won't see flames around you. I'm not saying that there won't be circumstances that feel like are, you're, you're afraid of. I'm not saying that it won't feel like you're about to get burned. But what I am saying is that if you believe in Jesus and put your faith in him, God can protect you from any fire you walk through because he is that powerful. Third thing, your perseverance and your testimony lead to other people's faith. I'm gonna say that one more time. Your perseverance and your testimony lead to other people's faith. See, often we miss this part of the story, but it's so important. King Nebuchadnezzar saw that in the fire, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego didn't freak out because they knew that Jesus was with them. They had the faith that he'd get them through it. There are people watching you. I don't know if you know, but there are people watching you in your fires in life. People who don't know Jesus. And how you handle and how do you handle your fires can determine the way that they will handle theirs. And when I'm not saying that you need to act strong or put on a fake face and act like everything's okay. Actually, I'm saying the opposite. When things feel overwhelming, when you feel like the flames are rising around you, it's okay to say, hey, I'm not strong enough to do this, but I'm still confident. Why? Because I know I serve a God who is, who is big enough and powerful enough to overcome whatever fire I'm gonna walk through. So I don't know how I'm gonna get out of this fire, but I do know that I have a God who's gonna set me free in it and help lead me through it. Tell people about your fires. I know that's opposite of what our culture says. They say to hide, act like everything's okay. No, no, no. Tell people about your fires. Tell people who brought you through them because maybe, just maybe, it'll lead to somebody else coming to know Jesus. So why does God allow fires? It's a big question, but here are three short answers because he's always faithful regardless and he's always in control and he's always worthy of worship. He wants to bring you freedom within your fires. And he wants to use your refining moments to shape others' futures. Listen to me, friend. You may be in a fire right now, but Jesus is going to use your fire to refine you into who you need to be. And all it takes is knowing that Jesus is with you in the fire and you can trust him to lead you in it and through it. Let's pray. Jesus, I love you. I'm so grateful for you. I believe in you. And I'm grateful that you are in any fire that we would, may walk through. Lord, thank you that your desire is to set us free. 
Lord, your desire is to break our bondage and lead us and refine us into the creation, into the person, into the calling that you have for us. Lord, I pray that if there's any student watching this who's in a fire right now, Lord, I pray that you would show them how to find freedom in the midst of it and give them faith that you're leading them out of it. Lord, I, I believe in you, I praise you, and it's in your beautiful name we pray. Altars where you need us. Take me there, take me there. What you need is just an offering. It's right here, my life is here, cause I'll be a living sacrifice for you. You're a fire, the refiner. I wanna be consumed. I want to be tried by fire, purified, so take whatever you desire. Lord, here's my life, oh, I want to be tried by fire, purified, so take whatever you desire. Lord, here's my life. Fire, the refiner, 
Wow, what an amazing service. I'm so glad that I was able to share that with you guys tonight. Hey, one quick announcement before I let y'all get to small group, something I'm pretty excited about is this. I get the amazing opportunity to be your next student pastor. And I could not be more excited. It's gonna be an amazing, amazing next few months as we dive into all that God has for us. And I cannot wait to do it alongside you and all the incredible leaders around you. We'll see you soon. Catch you next week.